Welcome to the eCamp channel. With you today is Xue Hang again. In this tutorial video, we will show very briefly the differences between batteries, supercapacitors, and pseudocapacitors. There is an increasing demand for portable electric device, electric vehicle, and stationary energy storage for the electric grid. The increasing demand drives the development of electrical energy storage devices. For an electrical energy storage devices, we always would like to have a shorter recharge time and a longer time to use before recharge. There are two types of electrical energy storage devices that are particularly attracting great attention recently. They are supercapacitor and a battery. If we plot the relationship between energy and power density, we get a random plot. On a random plot, it clearly shows that supercapacitors usually have a moderate energy density but have a higher power density. And for a battery, it have a low power density and a high energy density. And for our target, it's always to get a higher energy and higher power at the same time. So it means that we need to increase the energy density of a supercapacitor and the power density of a battery. An electrical double layer capacitor, which is one type of the supercapacitor, realizes the charge storage by ion absorption and the formation of the electrical double layers on the electrode surface. The process is completely non ferradiac means there is no redox reactions. So the charge storage process can be pretty fast. A battery, on the other hand, realizes the energy storage by ion integration and redox reaction. The process is ferradiac with phase transformation. Because the process is diffusion controlled, so the charge process is very slow. Comparing with a supercapacitor and a battery, it's like comparing a glass of water and a giant bottled water, a tank of water. If the water is energy stored in the device, a supercapacitor stores little energy but can be discharged quickly. And a battery, on the other hand, stores much more energy, but we can only charge and discharge slowly. There is one special device that is in between battery and electrical double layer capacitor called pseudocapacitor. A pseudocapacitor is like a jar of water. We can store more energy than electrical double layer capacitor and charge discharge much faster than battery. The charging mechanism of a pseudocapacitor is fundamentally different from the electrical double layer capacitor and a battery. A pseudocapacitor realizes energy by pseudocapacitive intercalation and surface redox reactions. In a pseudocapacitor, there is no phase transformation, so the charge process can be fast. There are several electrical characterization methods. Here we show cyclic photometry and the galvanostatic charge discharge. If we use the cyclic photometry, we charge and discharge the device with constant scan rate, for example, 100 microvolts per second, 1 millivolt per second, or even 100 volts per second. For the galvanostatic charge discharge, it means that we charge and discharge a device with constant current density. We can differentiate the type of device based on the shape of the CV and GCD curve. For an electrical double layer capacitor, the CV curve should be rectangular and the GCD curve is completely linear shaped. For a pseudocapacitor, the CV curve shows peaks and the peak locates at the same position on the charge and discharge branch. The GCD curve is nonlinear without any obvious plateaus. For a battery, there are strong pairs of peaks can be observed on the CV curve and the peak have a separation on the location. On the GCD curve, there is clear plateau can be observed. The peak on the CV curve and the plateau on the GCD curve corresponds to the process when there is redox reactions take place in a battery. We will talk more in detail about the differences between these three devices separately and introduce electrical characterization methods and also data analysis in the future. 
Thank you for watching the video today and hope to see you next time.